And with that, I'll start with, do we have any public comment from anybody on the committee? I know that um, Dave did bring to my attention that I forgot to put on the agenda that we need to vote a transfer so that um, for the, to cover the, the training that he attended and I'll try to remember to put it on for next time. Um, if you don't see it on the next agenda, please sure. me. <laughs> I'll try to remember before the deadline is uh, passed this that would time. Be, that would be really good. Um, and then um, if nobody else has anything, do we have any public comment from anybody in the public? We don't. Yeah, no. Um, I will say that if anybody does feel the least bit hungry, there are snacks over at the table. <laughs> Please help yourself. Um, so tonight we are anticipating hearing from the Council on Aging. The uh, Sue Doherty from the Eagle House will be um, doing her presentation of her target and over target budget and some information about what's going on over there. Then we will hear from the land use director on um, the budget coming out of the Ritter, I guess. And then um, the library director will be here <coughs> to present on the library budget. Um, so with that, since there's nothing else to um, stand in your way, we'll invite you up to entertain us, I guess, with, with <laughs> stories Thanks. of um, him and bean suppers and... You'll have to ask your mother about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sue Doherty. I'm the director at the um, Lunenburg Council on Aging and i um, here to prevent prevent present <laughs> my very little budget increase um, of five thousand dollars for pro for a program line at the senior center um, I've been using my formula grant funds in to um, pay for different facilitators and professional instructors mm -hmm. for some um, exercise programs in the memory cafe and it's becoming a little pricey because um, we want to do a quality program for everything that we do. So I thought if we could split the cost <coughs> of the Memory Cafe facilitator and the Zumba instructor, which is actually a little history on that, that's probably our biggest fitness program that we have. And we do it over at the Paseos because we don't have any room at the Senior Center to do it. And that can see up to 40 people in each class and they absolutely love it. Um, so she's, she, it's Carolyn Sargent, she's the instructor, and she's also a Nirvana instructor, which is a meditation Pilates type class, which is fairly new, but um, these things cost money to have the professionals come in and do it, and um, it leaves about $758 left over for other various programs that we have going on. <coughs> Um, when we can't afford instructors, we find some really good videos to do them too. And we have like an Ageless Grace video, mm -hmm. uh, Stronger Seniors video, things like that. We might want to update those and other programs that might come on down the line. I don't have them planned out all the time. <coughs> we have some new ones coming up that the uh, Zoomer instructor suggested, and one is like Bone Builders. And then she had, uh, what was the other one? Flow meditation, mind, body, and balance. And I was at a meeting today over in Lemonster with other directors from Worcester County, and um, they mentioned the newest craze is walking soccer. So I Googled it. It's interesting. It's meant for elders, but they looked a little aggressive, so I'm looking <laughs> at it. So. <laughs> I don't want anybody to get hurt. So that's something that I will probably talk to her about to see if she would be interested in that. But the $5,000 increase, that's, that's all I'm asking for this year, nothing else. Um, the Memory Cafe, the facilitator is Keith Lancelotti, and he does a great job. He's a great networker. Um, we started that Memory Cafe a year ago in September with 15 participants and we've seen like a 9.5 percent increase in people coming there with Alzheimer's dementia and along with their caregivers and that's just that's never gonna go away um, so 
that's what basically the five thousand dollar program line would be for okay and the program line that you're talking about is all right so that doesn't necessarily come that was above target but mm -hmm. it was also it's also represented in the town manager's preliminary budget so as approved it, as at least through her part yep. of it so. so this is inclusive in the current number which is 159 813 uh, i think correct. it's above isn't it or did she already no no it's in there okay. it's included in there okay um i just but that's a, a good question just to make sure that um we're keeping up with those and then i think basically mm -hmm. the um now you also have presented us with some some other information i don't know if you want right. to right um just to see um last <laughs> fiscal year i have to do a report to the state every year in order to get the formula grant funds and this is just shows you the numbers what we did um you know we served 978 unduplicated elders last year we had 57 volunteers it gives you a percentage of you know how many women how many men um, the programs you kind of bulked a lot of it together mm -hmm. um, like recreation programs because I'll tell you why because we have 99 different programs during the year and some of them are permanent in there there's I can't even tell you how many but I went through it today there's 99 I could name them all but I'm not going to we'll be here all night and I told you I'd be 10 minutes so <coughs> anyways um, so that just gives a report on the numbers for them all the different things we've done different outreach um, San for seniors food stamps things like that um, friendly visitors that we have the numbers that came in how you know we had eight people that needed friendly visitors and they were visited by I think we had two visitors last year 156 times during the year mm -hmm. so it's just it just gives a report to the state on what we do tells about the volunteers and things like that so that's just I just included that so you <coughs> can see what it was all about what is the uh, difference between a duplicated and an unduplicated duplicated is let me start with the unduplicated unduplicated is one person coming there for instance if you came there okay you're in the system but you came up there 46 times during the year so if you look at the let's see let me just pull one out here health screenings we had 33 mm -hmm. different people come in 99 times for blood pressure checks and blood sugar checks during the year um, other health services could in include flu clinic okay, reflexology see. yeah so the unduplicated are individuals right duplicated are how many individual times? services but they could have been delivered multiple times in right the <clears throat> like one person can be at the center yep. and sign in for bingo and lunch and something so they're there and they're there for three different activities during the day okay six times a week <laughs> and then basically okay so 2600 um, the transportation that you've been provided okay 2600 people have been transported how many rides a, how many rides a week do you think you're doing what page is that one on? Uh, that's on the page two and two of, four. of the um, annual report, and it's down under support services, transportation. Yep. Page two of four. This one. These two that look similar. Yeah. <coughs> Are you looking at the duplicated in our, okay yes we had 66 unduplicated clients throughout the year um, 62 of them were non ambulatory so they were in a wheelchair of some sort so out of this let's just go with the 66 number they took 2647 rides I guess my question goes to how many how about how many rides a week do you it yeah. all depends okay um, you know people call up they have a doctor's appointment we have a couple of regulars on there who take it um, matter of fact we have somebody going to radiation five days a week for five weeks so you mm -hmm. know this the same people typically go shopping on the same day sure so, you know it all depends how many we can cram on there so 
and I understand that this is formula driven and it specifically says do not sum C instructions and I'm sure the instructions are yeah. buried someplace but the number that you came to as a determined unduplicated elders served is 978 yep so that more or less represents 978 individual citizens of Lunenburg that have been served by the Council on Aging exactly mm -hmm. exactly so I you know obviously people at home can and I'm sure these numbers are hard to see if you can see them at all at home um, but that's a big number 978 people mm -hmm. served on a budget of somewhere less than $150,000 for this year um, the other number I'd like to point out is your volunteer service worksheet which shows 899.5 volunteer service hours um, which is just absolutely extraordinary it's a it's a great credit to yourself and your organization it was actually more than that that's just that first page oh the geez. Second okay page, yeah all right I stand corrected <laughs> that was just a uh, a uh, half half of the sum yeah yeah uh, so that number is for people at home 1553 and a quarter volunteer service hours that's actually less than last year we have more volunteers this year but less hours mm. so and I can um, probably credit that to the memory cafe because I've had like oh. beating people mm. away from wanting to volunteer we have nine great volunteers because we have to go through a certain training with them um, but it's that was big and there's other people who just you know I want to come up and I want to water the plants for you <coughs> I want to arrange a library for you and we say put in your volunteer hours put them in because they all count they all count well it's um it's a heck of a program you run and we're fortunate to have you and we're fortunate to have all of the volunteers and participants um, of your programs thank you yeah. and I just I want to thank um, Deb Lincoln she's our chairperson and she's oh, our great. greatest supporter and uh, Mrs. Birchfield who is the chairperson of the Eagle House supporters who contribute a lot of money to our programs um, without them we would really be hurting <coughs> but you know you can't always keep going back to that same well so that's why <laughs> I'm asking for the five thousand speaking of returning to a well I'd like to go back to the budget increase request uh, uh, Sue for a minute uh, it seems to me that it's, it's driven by a very positive effect which a positive cause which is uh, the number of people who are actually there actively looking for uh, wellness and health uh, programs mm -hmm. so uh, with that in mind uh, uh, you also mentioned in the request that uh, it has been uh, in, in your in, in your uh, budget but funded through grant monies council energy gift fund and through fundraising group have those things dried up or is it just that no, this is a little more it's, just, uh, it's I have a grant from uh, greater Lowell Community Council and the uh, North Worcester Community Council that I can only apply for every other year mm -hmm. and they gave me five thousand dollars last year for the memory cafe um, the reason why I put so much money into the memory cafe is because we want to make it a legit cafe to make it like it's they're in their neighborhood coffee shop um, so we have it catered we have entertainment that stuff costs money we do crafts <coughs> we do all kinds of stuff so that was a huge help the supporters have been very big in supporting that also we have um, private donations to the Council on Aging gift fund mm -hmm we have a lady on our board um, Sarah Grant she's done she's been doing tea parties there and uh, she does tea parties for the Laurel Wood Garden Club over in Fitchburg over at the Art Museum too and this year I think she raised close to three thousand dollars doing the tea party and um, gave the bulk of it to the memory cafe towards that so that sits in the Council on Aging gift fund also I don't want to have to use that as income all the time that should stay there for things that are needed so that's a just in case we need something really big the other thing that we did with the memory cafe was we started a um, lending library 
with books geared for people with Alzheimer's and uh, dementia, easy to read, but they're not, they're, I don't want to say adult books, they're novels. <laughs> and if you read them, it's like, wow, okay, this is really cool. And we also have books that I purchased for caregivers, too. So um, that was not my idea that a former teacher in town um, has dementia and her daughter-in-law had told me that she really loves to read and this is like the best thing that she's ever had. So she, she suggested getting some books. So I've been purchasing every book that I possibly can off of Amazon <coughs> and we have a nice little library now over there to loan out to people. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that. <coughs> Should we expect following, is it this, uh, up on this, that this 5,000, if it's a success, will become just a normal part of your budget? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm so planning on. So it's recurrent. Yes. Recurrent. Yes. Okay. Thanks, sir. And I'll be back again next year, maybe with some more stuff that I'm looking at, <laughs> too. But, you know, one thing at a time. <laughs> No, and I think, um, I, I know I was having this conversation earlier, but I, this is the one social service agency that the town has, and I think that you do do a phenomenal um, job over there with the um, resources that are available. It's true, we do. We, you know, we find ourselves having <coughs> younger families calling us, uh, looking for the food banks, things like that, food stamps, we can help them um, set up their applications for food stamps. Uh, younger family members who don't know what to do with their parents if something goes wrong and they have issues and we have an outreach coordinator who does a great job um, dealing with all these people and solving their problems so and you know with more building coming into the town for senior housing and such it's just going to increase mm -hmm. so so without giving you sticker shock this is we're starting with this and then we'll make bigger and better improvements down the line, hopefully. Okay. Does anyone else have any yeah. questions? I'm sorry, Just real Dave. quick. I just want to make a comment about what we're doing here with this $5,000 is uh, obviously replacing funds that have been coming from sources that are either intermittently available or could dry up at some point in the future. And this is something that I think is real important for us to start doing. Uh, I think in the library uh, presentation a little bit later, we'll hear about another insertion of uh, town money into programs, uh, allowing you guys to have that extra money to further enhance your programs going forward. And I think that's a great move. Thank you. That's great. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then with that, um, Adam is here, so we will hear from Adam. And we're going through all the land use offices. So. And I can't find them, so <laughs> we just need a minute. Hopefully they're in there. Start somewhere on page five, I believe. Are there, are there number conservation yep. conservation planning yep. board zoning board and building inspector yep so you'll see the wiring inspector and the plumbing inspector are in there uh, but they're all zeros because that's a percentage of permit revenues so we don't budget that we intake that money they get their percentage into the revolving fund and they're paid out through that so it's not general fund revenue uh, I don't have much of a presentation. Our task is regulatory and reactionary. We react to what people submit. Um, the gross majority of our budget is personnel uh, with some office supplies and other ancillary costs built in. Um, you'll notice that our target total is the same as the, tar our requested total is the same as the target total. Um, there are a few line items in the planning board budget that were shifted around uh, just to respond to the way the budget was spent this year. Our advertising budget is, inclu is increased. Uh, we've been doing a lot of advertising. Um, we've reduced some of the other budget lines to, to make up for that uh, as mm. we've been transferring money from, from those items into uh, advertising this year. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I don't have a... I mean, 
we don't do a lot of programs because we're we're here to enforce the bylaws and respond to applications. Okay. Um, one question I had was on the the funding of the master plan. Yes. Is that funded for next year? Uh, the planning board requested capital funding last year, uh, received $50,000. We're in the process of beginning that. Uh, the board didn't want to request additional funds until we had made some progress on the first bite at the apple. Uh, last year we applied for a state planning assistance grant that was not funded. Uh, so we're hopeful that in doing the first couple of chapters, uh, we may have a stronger application coming next May. Uh, and we may come back for additional funds in 21 or 22. 22. I always get that mixed up. <laughs> uh, what we're doing right now is uh, we're waiting for an estimate on a population projection study um, because as was pointed out when we did the symposium back in October, our projections are just shot. They're, they're not even like in the ballpark. So we're in contact with the Donahue Institute who does, is, they're the lead census um, respondent for the state. They handle all the federal communication. Uh, and they did the, po the original population projections. Uh, and in speaking with them, what happens is they do it for DOT. And that's what everybody uses across the state. So the MPO is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. The 13 regional planning agencies mm -hmm. host the MPOs. And the federal money goes to the state, and the MPOs dole it out by region. So Summer Street was a project on the transportation improvement plan which is done by the MPO long story into a, an easy answer is when they divide population what they do is they look at the percentage of how it's distributed throughout the communities within the MPO regions and they look at what the projections are and they distribute on an equivalent basis percentage wise 99% of the time that's reasonably accurate enough for a population projection uh, we happen to have grown exponentially between the two censuses, housing-wise, so our, our data is all skewed. Mm -hmm. So in speaking with them, they're going to look at a more specific study of how our growth has happened, how our population trends have been reflected through the ACS and other means, uh, local census over the years and extrapolate that out specifically for Lunenburg, and that will be the basis we take the master plan forward with. Is there a timeline on that? Uh, I expect uh, before the end of the month to have a quote, and they said that um, it would probably be early spring when we get that back. <coughs> this spring? Yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. Um, does anybody have any questions? A yeah, quick question, Adam. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of uh, plan review and engineering review that's done throughout the year for uh, conservation plan, especially conservation and planning. Mm -hmm. Where are those costs reflected in here? Because I don't see any contracted costs listed. They're not anywhere. reflected in there. The town doesn't bear that cost. So we use 53G, <coughs> which is a state law that allows us to hire outside consultants at the cost of the applicant. Okay. So we, the town has adopted it. Conservation uses it probably less than we do, mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes conservation projects that require it are also requiring planning approval. So we roll it into one. Uh, at times we roll in sewer uh, reviews as well. So what we do is we collect a, an upfront amount of money, um, usually about $2,000, and we send the project off to the review engineer when we receive it. He gives us an estimate. Um, he does his review, and as funds get expended, when we get to about 25%, we request additional funds. Thank you. And I know that um, it comes up regularly um, in some conversation that whether or not the town should be looking at hiring an engineer versus con contracting. Um, and basically, I'm just curious about the position of the, I understand that you know in certain uh, situations, you need one type of engineer versus another, so it's, you know, I, not that I want to fill positions. No, either. no. I, and this is something that does come up often. And I've worked in communities where there are multiple engineers that are employed by the town. Uh, oftentimes, the DPW director will also be an engineer in a smaller town. Um, that will be part of the qualifications. 
what I have found is for most instances those folks don't do plan review uh, for planning boards and conservation just because they're doing a multitude of other things sometimes having an engineer on staff can help you uh, with DPW work because you can you can you can do plans quicker you can have plans ready and not have to go out um, for what they call book jobs and we'll go back to the the tip if you have like Chase Road it, it would be a book job where they ground and redid it uh, sometimes you have to have specifications drawn up and ready to go when they say hey we have extra money we have two million dollars you can say look I've got this plan on my shelf if you have an engineer sometimes they can do that in-house as opposed to having to pay a consultant to have that work ready and done and you can use that chapter 90 money to actually be paving roads or doing physical projects. Uh, design is, as far as I understand it, uh, acceptable under Chapter 90. So while having an engineer might pay some benefits to planning, conservation, land use, and in some ways, I don't think it would cancel out the use of outside engineers for project review. Uh, those project reviews are usually very intense. Uh, there's a specific timeline and you know, we come into work and we never know what's going to pop up, uh, especially someone who's working in the DPW uh, where they might have to go and, and handle something. And if they have to put that project review aside, that can draw out, you know, planning board reviews and, and approvals. And with a review engineer, they, that's their job. They're, they're doing just that. And they can you tell them we need it by this date. And, and they have it for the most part. Okay. And then I also um, was just going to ask on the status of the, I know you folks were trying to get an economic development committee going. And I don't know economic development committee it. has been formed, okay. or the charge has been adopted. Uh, currently we have two members. We're waiting for um, conservation, uh, agriculture, and um, open space to make recommendations for the board to adopt. And if anybody's interested, we're still looking for at-large members as well. Okay. Any questions for any other? How many at large members seats two. are there? Two. And we have a seat for a business owner in Lunenburg. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd be an ex officio member. They're not required to be a resident. Obviously, it's always nice to have a resident as well, but we're looking for someone to represent the business community. Mm -hmm. Now, if at large members were also business owners and we got a third business owner, that's not necessarily bad either. Right. Uh, I've been in conversations with the <coughs> Lunenburg Business Association. Um, I went and met with them at one of their monthly meetings. So they're aware of it, and they're sort of kicking it around internally to see if they have someone who might be interested. Sounds good. No other I'm questions? I'm good. So we're good. Yep. It helps you. that you Thanks don't so. ask for something, you know. <coughs> I, think, I, think I work year, with what you give me. I think next year we'll move these guys to the last presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you're, breaking us early. You're, breaking us, you're breaking us in slowly. Actually, yeah, it's going to have to. Um, it, it'll be good prep time for um, when Monty Tech comes in and does their presentation on the formula. So? You're the contact. Yeah. Or not. Okay, just, just watch out. Okay. Be, be seeing, uh, uh, couple. Mm -hmm. A little sidebar. I lost control of the meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I lost control of Muir. He left. I don't. Know. Oh, <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I would have just called him up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought he was coming up. Um, he is. He's, he was here. Yeah, uh, he is. He probably. Cameo appearance. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be right back. <laughs> I don't want to uh, he he must have thought you were going to talk longer. Huh? Um, all right, then well, basically. Uh, we're going to go on to a uh, couple of agenda items just to um, until he does come back. Um, we have no minutes to go over tonight. Um, is there a financial report from the financial director? No financial report. There are no finances in town? No finances. There are no finances. <laughs> Where does that leave us? <laughs> Honest to goodness, you let the town manager take a vacation and all of a sudden there's no finances. Um, this committee. All right. In regards to that, based on the uh, report that was given to the Board of Selectmen on Tuesday, um, We're on our FY20 budget is right on track. Yep. That so is true. Congratulations yes, to everybody yep. that's uh, keeping that under control. Yep. Um, 
And then we did get the report that the, um, the health insurance uh, estimate came in even lower than was originally projected. So the 3.5% that had been anticipated is now 0.66%, mm. um, which is stunning, yeah. <laughs> actually. Um, what drove that? I believe what did drive it was probably just the um, the usage of the dem the demographics and usage of the it's the experience oh. rating really. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is it based on claims? <coughs> to some extent, yeah, it's based on claims, and so ba and the experience and that's what I mean by the experience rating is mm -hmm. that if you if you're not. I mean, I can tell you where I work that it went up way more than 0.66%. So we tend to have a smaller group and much, the demographics are probably all over the place. Um, so this represents, in the, just so that I fully understand the, the numbers that the, that the town manager shared with us via email, this represents a savings from the current proposed budget um, of roughly roughly um, forty five thousand dollars on the town budget and roughly twenty one thousand dollars in the school budget for it and what was was not clear to me is if the twenty-one thousand from the school is inclusive of the forty-five from the town, or they're two separate. They're two separate things, I believe. Two separate numbers, so it's actually a total savings of <coughs> sixty-six thousand dollars, or something along those lines. Except for the fact that the school committee can, before, based on the number that's in the budget currently, they'll just reassign this twenty-one thousand. I understand that, yes. right, yes. right. But in in true dollars and it's savings, sixty-one thousand. Yes, yeah, okay. thousand. Right. Yes. Okay. So for our budgeting purposes, the school department funds their health insurance within their budget. For their current staff, that's right. correct. For the current staff. That excludes the retirees that then jump to the town. I understand that. Right. Right. Okay. No, I know you understand that. I just want to make sure everybody oh, okay. understands yep. that. Yep. Um, and I think... It is a bit confusing when you... Yeah, it is. Because basically, because we don't get into the nuts and bolts of the school committee budget um, on the, in, within the town budget that makes it really kind of hard to, to well say we also when we're answer. when we're comparing trying to compare apples to apples like for example when you're looking at department increases right the way we look at the school department increase versus the way we look at DPW or library it's not really an apples to apples when you consider in one form, we're including the health insurance number. In another form, we're carrying that health insurance as a separate line. So it's not a fully burdened cost. Correct. I mean, it is what it is. It's just right. you got to keep track of it in your head. Right. Welcome to the Finance Committee. Yeah, I get, you know, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. Um, just look at the numbers, though, because I, I know you just said, and if this is televised, because the difference between the town's, the town's increase, well, the, the reduction in health insurance because From of the, the projection right. rate is 45,000. 45,316. And the difference right. between the school's request is about 80,000. I thought that was because the school has much, their active group is much larger than the town. Mm -hmm. So when you said the savings was... I think you're right. I apologize. So I it's was about 80. I was misreading a number. So they're going from 21,552 roughly to 21,470. That's why I looked at the email. Thank, yeah, thank you for correcting I me. Right. Yeah, thank you for correcting me. It's, no, actually, it's, I misread it. It's a little over $80,000. I was misreading a number. It also. No, thank you for <clears> that because I. I so, the, was so the total, the, which would make given the logic that we all just agreed to, not with the, with the incorrect numbers, <laughs> it would make the total roughly $125,000 in total savings. Okay, yep. Okay, um, I'm sorry, John, did you want to say? I, I just, uh, one thing to keep in mind is just, the school has a larger pool of users, 
so likely their savings is more stable, whereas the town is a little smaller pool of users, and so it, it just would take a, uh, it may take uh, just a couple of different issues that could that could possibly. Are we, are we actually yeah. running from the same policy, though? Are it's we, one it's policy. policy? Okay, yeah. So, I'm, yeah. So, so it's the same risk. It really it's, it's the same, same risk, risk group. Pool. Risk pool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Muir, we're ready for the to hear about the library. <laughs> You're always ready. Yeah. Yep. FY21 library stuff. Um, just to start off, got to go through a quick look at the library, some FY20 statistics with some FY19 thrown in just for perspective, um, some library budget numbers overall, talk about outside funds quickly. I know you guys had questions about some of that. Talk about FY21 goals and then my requests and some rationale. Um, and then wrap it up. There are really three pillars for us at Lunenburg Public Library. Create, collaborate, communicate. Um, these have been um, areas of our focus for at least several years. Um, for me in particular, collaborate and communicate are especially important. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But also, for background, the library mission. The Lunenburg Public Library is committed to fostering democratic principles by providing free and open access to information and community resources, and by supporting an environment of lifelong learning, community cohesiveness, and the growth of knowledge. We provide a window to the world well beyond Lunenburg for all ages and backgrounds by using current technologies, quality resources, and programs. All right, so what have we been up to? People-wise, FY19 versus FY20 so far, so that's the July to February period, we're seeing about a 4% increase. Um, so that would mean over the 65,201 visitors in FY19 were on pace for 67,800 in this fiscal year, um, which is nice to see over the past few years before that. We're fairly steady, although up and down fluctuations from year to year. Um, going back to FY19, it's easier to get an entire picture of our programming. Uh, it's one of our core services. Uh, in FY19, we delivered more than 400 programs um, and we had more than 8,000 attendees at those, at those programs. Um, another key library metric, circulations. How many items pe do people borrow from the library? Uh, for perspective, FY19, we saw 82,646 items circulate total. So that includes books, videos, audio books, electronic materials, including e-books and, and e-audio books as well. Um, and so far in FY20, we are looking at a 14% increase over that, which is gargantuan. Um, we've been really busy this year. Um, and since I looked at the numbers to pr prepare for this presentation, now I realize why. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just me stepping into this new position. We are actually quite a bit busier this year so far. Hopefully that will continue. Um, uh, valuation, I get 
a little bit different perspective on this later in the presentation, but um, in FY19, the materials that circulated over our circulation desk um, were valued at $987,000, a little higher than that. Mm. Um, and so far, two thirds of the way through the year, that same amount, you know, valuation of items circulated through Lunenburg is at 710,972. Um, so that reflects that that 14, you know, approximately, you know, same ballpark as the 14% mm -hmm. increase in circulation. Um, if you lend a one dollar item twice, it counts as two dollars. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And um, so this is a that's actually a calculation that the library network does for us, um, and I think that they have uh, mm -hmm. it's. It, I don't think it's full list price that they actually value each circulation at. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, materials older than a year. I don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. the pro rated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, electronic circulations in FY19 were 11,339 of those 82. Yeah, John. Yeah, and Mira, is that uh, how much of an increase? Or, well, that, that's a leading question. Is that an increase from FY18? And if so, how much? Circulation and, and value of circulation. Yeah, um, in in, in e-books or e uh, e material. Uh, in e material, it's a slight decrease. Decrease. Yeah, slightly. Okay. I think it's twelve thousand seventy something. Okay. Uh, for FY eighteen, that for electronic material or for e-books and e audio books, um, which was just a slight increase from FY seventeen, which was a huge increase, um, like a. Like two hundred percent. That's like six thousand the year before that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so especially with electronic materials, the circulation um, can really fluctuate based on communication. Wh whether we're communicating the resources to patrons, um, the size of the collection, whether there are the the items that people are looking for readily accessed. Because if they don't, if they're not there, people quit pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so. I, I get to numbers later on in the presentation, but the size of the collection for electronic materials has grown. Um, and so part of that usage increase is reflecting that people are actually finding it and continuing to use the resource um, as time goes by instead of quitting. Okay. Now, when we met several months ago, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if it was a televised meeting or not, so. It wasn't. Um, but you had, you had described a, a situation that's going on with publishers um, whereby you know the publishers are essentially trying to disincentivize people from borrowing from libraries if they can get them to buy directly from the publisher audiobooks and that sort of thing and so newly published materials are available in only very small quantities electronically as I think what you described to us is that phenomenon reflected in this number? No. So okay. the, the, in particular, the Macmillan embargo um, only began in November of 2019. Okay, ah. so it's relatively so, new. Yeah, completely different than the numbers mm -hmm. here. Um, and I think it's, it's difficult to, to truly capture what effect that effect that is yeah and that's one of the big questions um, one of the librarians main objections to the the policy itself on the part of the publishers mm -hmm. um, they they don't have data that supports the their their logic mm -hmm. um, and uh, libraries do have data that kind of suggest other things mm -hmm. um, that libraries actually stimulate purchasing um, so yeah numbers here not going to show any of that yet okay okay sure uh, one of our real big highlights every year is summer reading program. Um, this past year, per, this past summer, um, was the third year in a row that we increased participation numbers. Um, mm -hmm. 50 children's programs just during the six weeks that we do summer reading. Um, 1,230 attendees, 12 teen programs, 255 attendees. Um, we expanded to include adults as far as programming and kind of reading incentives um, too, although we didn't track the data for th that group yet. We're planning to do that this, this summer. And so for the teens and children's readers, there were 445 young people that registered to participate 
um, and they read for thousands of hours um, just over the summer. Um, wireless sessions, we always kind of estimate that. Um, basically, we're estimating around 8,000 sessions. That means less, you know, one in every seven people who come in the library, if they use the wireless, that's about the amount that we're talking about here. And so, you know, if one out of seven people come into the library and check their phone. It's pretty Do you require a login or is it just open now? Uh, partway through, actually after FY19, it was uh, July of this year. So FY20, mm -hmm. we changed our wireless access points um, and now we have a splash page. So there is that kind of, it's not technically registering, um, mm -hmm. but the, the data collects unique. But there was a time where you needed your library card to access the wireless. Is that still a, is that still not a anymore. thing? Not anymore. Nope. Okay. It's open. There's just a splash page. So you agree to the, the Whatever the policies are. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah, no limits. All right. Library budget numbers. Uh, FY20, our municipal library budget totaled $416,727. That was a 0.004% increase over FY19. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, what I realized just moments before I started was I left out our health insurance cost for the payroll department. So <laughs> uh, FY20 other departments, which means DPW, uh, was $29,024. And I, I, Honestly, I think it was about $80,000 in health insurance as well, but that's not on here, so I'll make that unofficial. Um, we also uh, plan to use... So I'm sorry, can you yeah, repeat? Ahead. The 29000 is for what? DPW, ex um, expenses on behalf of the library. So okay. building maintenance, uh, fire alarms, um, what else is included on mm -hmm. there? Plowing, maybe. What's that? Plowing, snow plowing. Or not? I, I assume that that is technically paid salary uh, for kit. Okay. Um, yeah. And so that's not reported in that amount. Salaries in other departments not on here. Right. Um, so that doesn't include the IT help we get from Dan, for instance. Um, that 29000 is lumped into facilities, though, on the town side, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I printed it off $2,000 rubbish removal. A little payment for IT, the school dude for appointments, um, maintenance costs about 6,500, fire alarms 3,500, contracted cleaning that's a big one 14,000, um, custodial supplies, building maintenance supplies, so light bulbs and stuff like that, 29,000 total. Uh, FY20 other outside funds, so we're anticipating, you know, spending these funds. Um, mm -hmm. 75,697 total. Could, uh, you, could you give us an example of what another outside fund? Absolutely. I've got a couple slides oh, coming okay, up good. next that uh, expand on that. Go on, I can wait. Yep. Um, so that in FY20 anticipated total 521,449, not including health insurance. Um, the FY21 state requirement for appropriation is 410,000. So that's um, an average of the previous three years of appropriated funds uh, increased by two and a half percent. Yep, okay. So that's the minimum requirement to stay certified for the total appropriated amounts from the town. And if we're comparing apples to apples or what is the um, relevant line from fiscal year 2020 that would be the 416 correct line, yes which excludes the donations and dpw yes okay um, our budget request for fy21 is four hundred fifty-three thousand two hundred forty-seven. that's an eight percent increase um, and um, fy21 town manager's preliminary budget for the library 433,197 for a 3.4% increase. So, what are some of the uses and sources of other, our other outside funds? Um, in FY20, Friends of the Lunenburg Public Library is our kind of the biggest group there. Um, we're expecting 
uh, between their operating uh, budget and their endowment <coughs> gifts, um, $57,000 from them. They pay many expenses on behalf of the library, um, building maintenance, program supplies and refreshments, uh, printing and copying equipment and supplies, other office supplies. Uh, they pay for furniture, uh, collections sometimes, uh, teen video games, for instance, is one that they have um, have given us some money for um, and other library materials as well. So Can you just uh, mention yep. the, in terms of building maintenance, what types of things the, f the friends have paid for? Um, yeah, and I've got a little bit on another slide later f if, if you, so you don't have to take notes. You're um, such a tease. Uh, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> just like, it's always a little more later, a little more later. Um, I expect me to forget over that. Over to... to there be footnotes? <laughs> they're, they're making sure we don't just get to leave, I guess. We're always on the edge uh, of our seats. So in FY19, they paid about $2,000 for things like painting. Uh, we painted the staff work area and um, the friends paid for that. We also painted another part of the library and paid for that out of our building maintenance budget for contracted mm -hmm. services. Yeah. Um, FY18, they spent 7400 on upholstery cleaning and I think that also included some reupholstery work on some of the furniture. Um, FY17, it was at least $1,400 on uh, maybe grout cleaning. I think that was the year we, no, it wasn't grout cleaning. It was, um, sorry, I didn't write that down. That's okay. I don't need a, that specific. Okay. I just, yeah, uh, just yeah ballpark of, of how much is. they're yeah. spending on building maintenance. Sure. Yeah, fluctuates, <coughs> but there's kind of a rotating <coughs> schedule that we've been on um, yeah. for, for things like grout cleaning, upholstery cleaning, uh, carpet cleaning. Uh, painting different pieces of the library. Okay. Um, yep. State aid is another <coughs> source of outside funding. Um, 16,000 plus expected for FY21. Or FY20, sorry. Um, we use some of that money for our CW Mars membership fee. Mm -hmm. um, we also use it for technology needs. Um, and on some electronic databases. Does that state aid go on top of the budgeted amount or does that state aid come through the town and then is appropriated through the budget? It's through the town, it is not appropriated. It's not appropriated. Correct. Okay. So it's outside of that 416,000. Okay. It's one of the offsets on the cherry sheet. So I, okay. 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 The cherry sheet, you'll see the number there. Yeah. When the funds come in, they go into a totally separate fund and they require no appropriation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Um, and so that money is based on um, three grants. the library incentive grant, the municipal equalization grant, and a non-resident circulation offset. Um, the library incentive grant is population based, uh, mm -hmm. so we can expect that to increase. Um, the municipal equalization grant is formulaic and connected to uh, lottery, um, the lottery formula. Um, so that is less likely to increase in large amounts. <coughs> The non-resident circulation offset is based on circulation to people who don't live in Lunenburg. Um, so that fluctuates based on usage. Um, we do have a, if I do say so myself, a lovely library. Um, and so we do see a lot of people coming from Fitchburg, Lemonster, surrounding towns to come use the library. And that, every time they borrow an item, um, contributes to some of that money coming yeah. back. So we're a net receiver? on that or do we know um, that's pretty tough to calculate um, interlibrary loans is slightly different um, and technically we are a net giver on that and that but um, non-resident circulation is a totally different number okay so you know non-resident circulation is kind of like someone who might interlibrary loan an item but decides to come visit actually instead mm -hmm. yeah they're borrowing directly from our yeah, library yeah so yeah so it's a three kind of different columns of right. those circulation okay. numbers. Yeah. Uh, revolving fund is also outside of appropriation. Uh, well, technically that's, it doesn't qualify in 
sorry, this is complicated. Um, technically, it is a pr an appropriated fund, um, mm -hmm. but it doesn't count towards the formula um, for the state for the state requirement. Um, uh -huh. Thank you. Um, so, and typically this this um, <coughs> fluctuates from year to year. Overall, it's kind of been on a downward trend. Um, fewer fines, overdue fines, and replacement uh -huh. fees being paid over time. Um, but usually, we spend that money on replacing items, um, kind of directly one to one. Something gets lost, somebody pays for it. Sure. We decide we want to keep it in the collection, and we buy a new one. Um, we also use it sometimes for periodical subscriptions. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. This year, FY20, we also are, have already received, um, and we're, it's, the money is going through the friends, um, $3,500 from Hannaford. Um, their corporate um, kind of community outreach branch has given us money to help support our Turkey Hill fifth grade visits. Um, so it's a program that we kind of kicked off last year and, and changed a little bit for this year, but it's been wonderfully successful. Once a month, every class from the fifth grade in Lunenburg comes to visit the library, learn how to be good library citizens, how to use the library, um, <coughs> and get excited about reading, of course. Um, and so uh, this money is actually going directly to pay for a shelving unit that replaces an older one in the, in the, in the children's area to increase ease of access to the materials. So it'll give us a little more display space, um, but also allow us to reformulate where things are. Um, and then also create a dedicated uh, tween space for those you know, tween age students. Um, and that's based on the success of our teen room renovation in FY18 um, and FY19 uh, carried over. Uh, great success in seeing this increase in numbers of kids coming after school to use the library. And so this slightly younger demographic doesn't have a dedicated space for them until mm -hmm. this redesign. Um, and it just kind of helps open up the space and, and make it feel more homey. Um, On the Hannaford gift, is there an advantage just to writing it through the friends as opposed to going directly to the library? Uh, I don't think there's, there's much of a um, big benefit uh, the the timing of it, mm -hmm. um, it's a we can pay it a little more quickly and get the work scheduled a little more quickly through the friends. Oh, really? Uh, okay. That's just a, a function of um, you know, paperwork um, sure. and getting the sure. check out. But um, there's no cost to it, though. It's just it's just a pass through. Correct. Okay. Uh, we also have gifts each year uh, that fluctuates from year to year depending on. You know, mm -hmm. how generous are you know what the contexts and situations are so uh, gifts often are connected to intentions of the donor and and many times they're there it's just a little bit of money that we use on a book so uh, so just talk quickly about some goals for FY 21 um, as I mentioned the three pillars Collaboration and communication in particular. Collaborate, collaboration always strengthens communities. So whether we're collaborating amongst um, staff members, um, creating a tighter knit staff group to better serve the, the public, um, whether we're uh, partnering with other departments in town, um, it's difficult over the long term to maintain good relationships based on changes in staffing, but um, we've got great relationships with other departments. Um, or collaborating with other community groups, giving them space, uh, working with um, groups like the, uh, the pollinator habitat um, to disseminate information and increase awareness about important issues for the community. Um, we're, through collaboration, strengthening the Lunenburg community. Um, the second part of that that I really wanna focus is communication. Our biggest opportunity is communicating to our patrons or potential patrons um, what we've got at the library um, and all of the good resources that we offer. Um, something everyone can benefit from. The second um, real major goal um, is a strategic plan, a long range plan for the library. Um, it's a key to improving or even uh, over the short term maintaining services 
um, a solid understanding uh, of what the community's needs are. Um, it's been 10 years now since the library had a long-term long plan, um, particularly with a new director stepping on board, it's the perfect time mm -hmm. um, to launch that. Um, and funding uh, for an outside consultant would enable the staff to maintain strong services um, for a group that, that already stretches our staff resources as far as, far as they'll go. Um, it's really important to the possibility of a strategic plan to hire an outside consultant. So we're asking us for um, some money for that. Um, and then the other big goal is, is programs. Um, program attendance is increasing. Um, programs are ever more important to the, the core of the library. Um, can to continue to serving con sorry con to continue serving the community well um, we really want to expand uh, both the variety and the number of programs that we're offering um, and so that's a big goal for FY21 we've got a steady staff and so in in programming positions and so that that really enables um, working on that uh, so for our budget requests uh, as I was saying, strategic plan, um, I did ask for an additional $5,000 on the um, contracted services line to fund that consultant. I've got estimates from $3,000 up to $12,000, um, depending on you know, how in-depth um, the consultant's assignments are um, and you know, who and what the, the individual or group is. Um, the plan obviously uh, itself, the long range plan, will um, guide the responsiveness of the library's services, um, which is key um, to delivering. Um, it'll also um, either limit or guide the areas of focus for the library over the, the near future as well, uh, particularly with the potential for increased growth uh, it's important to, to get to know the community well um, and funding and consultant would enable that to happen without taking staff away from other other assignments uh, another big part of our budget request an increase to the energy lines so electricity and natural gas for heating um, there's a 10 percent cut to electricity in fy19 and um, funding 14% below the actual costs in FY19 for natural gas. Um, so we're projecting in FY20 that uh, those lines will actually be overextended uh, mm -hmm. based on recent history and run rates. Um, so the requested amount includes those anticipated FY20 expenses um, and additional funds. Another big part of library spending is library materials. Uh, and that the amount of that request is um, tied directly to the total budget number. Um, that municipal allocation requirement um, that we talked about um, has a second component, which is 16% of, of the total appropriated amounts must be spent on qualifying library materials. And typically, that's books, videos, audiobooks, the things that circulate from the library. Mm -hmm. um, in FY19, we spent $95,221 on library materials. Um, so that's, uh, you know, th about $30,000 from outside funds on library materials. Um, okay, well, just to, um, to clarify that particular question. So since it required at 16%, what what's the figure that would be the 16%? Uh, so... Is it on a later slide? I don't think that actually is. Um, <laughs> so if the 16% mm. of 453,000, which was our requested amount for the budget, uh, came out to 75,000, I think. Okay, so that's where the 70, well, you had 73,000 uh, 73, that was 73, yeah. requested. So you've been spending well above that rate anyway. Yes. Typically, our spending on library materials is above the, above the budgeted mm -hmm. library materials line. 
Okay, so that uh, and the town manager is not here to ask, but I'm going to assume that in her pro her proposed budget or her preliminary budget, she had budgeted sixty-seven thousand. So that would hit the sixteen percent of the four hundred thirty-three thousand. I'm going to guess in her notes. In her she notes, says it does. I, I have not actually seen the line to, line by line budget okay. for the library yet. Just the total amounts. Okay. For her preliminary budget. Okay. That is one of the one of those priorities and I I do have more on that on a slide later um, okay uh, one of those top priorities that her preliminary budget does uh, does meet uh, for for from my perspective uh, okay that materials budget is one of the top three things okay uh, so the producers price index data from May 17 to July 19 there's an increase in 7% for printing costs to just give you, so that's over about two years, it's a 7% mm -hmm. increase, but um, that's the general trend over the last two years. Is up. Um, so just as far as the, you know, what do materials cost uh, from the producer's side, there's your answer. Uh, sure. Increasing amounts. Yep. And also understanding that because it's a library, the cost of an individual item is gonna be significantly more than an individual buying a book. It dep that depends. That depends. Um, so for physical books, mm -hmm. um, it's actually the opposite. Oh, really? Although with Amazon thrown in, it's, it can be a toss-up. So we are part of the Massachusetts Higher Education Consortium. So it's a buying agreement that with negotiated prices for vendors. Um, and we get a set discount on, off of list price for books, all sorts of other items as well. Um, but books typically is about 45% off. Mm -hmm. um, that's been pretty much the same for her a long time. Um, so th that's not like changing anything. Um, electronic books is the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll pay $3, $8 for a Kindle book. A library pays 60, 70, 80, hundred dollars or more. Um, the added complication with electronic materials, there are several ways to price materials for um, publishers. Um, one is a, I don't want to get too jargony, but uh, I will. Single use, single copy, single use. Um, so digitally you limit the use of, a, of that item to something as if it was a physical item, right? You buy one physical book, only one person can read it at a time unless you're really cooperative. Um, <laughs> So that single-use um, digital price is often much higher than a consumer's price for an e-book. Okay. Um, many of our first copies of items in the digital collection are that, that form of licensing. They're also metered access, um, which can be either a set period of time that you have access to kind of one copy at a time, mm -hmm. so like 24 months. Um, and then the other metered access is number of circulations, so 24 circulations, for instance. Um, and those prices can fluctuate, and it's very difficult to, mm -hmm. to really capture um, a sense of, you know, apples to oranges, comparing the, that pricing to even just the, the physical item or the, the one copy, one use um, digital item. Um, it's really difficult to compare. Okay. Um, but I do have, um, I think it's one more slide after this, um, some cost per use of digital items. So sure. just some digital trends to, to continue to answer the question. Um, you know, what are ebooks and audiobooks like at the library? Um, this slide, I've got collection size over time. Um, so the bar chart gives you four different years. 2017 is not on there because I don't have good data. Um, <coughs> um, and then the, the chart on the left gives you exact numbers for pieces split up by audience, uh, adult, young adult, children, and then split also between <coughs> e-books and e-audiobooks. Um, and you can see <coughs> collections growing significantly over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here's an idea of ebooks cost. Um, it's not direct uh, you know, expenses. Um, in fact, this is 
the Massachusetts average expenditures per library and circulation per library on ebooks. Um, so it gives you a number uh, cost per circulation. Um, so kind of in an attempt to generalize across those three different pricing structures. Um, 2016, 17, and 18 um, up, up by about 13%. How does that relate to cost per circulation for a physical book? Exactly. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, oh. I oh. don't. I didn't. I didn't drag that data data out. Um, it's significantly higher. Um, we were well under a dollar, typically. Um, okay. For physical items. Yeah. Per circulation. Yeah. Yeah, expenditure-wise. I'm sorry. Where would you get that uh, information? Thank you, Peter. Where would you get that information? I mean, is, there, is, there some, is there a web search so we could, we could find that out? Um, I'm not sure if, I can't remember if we report, I don't think we report spending on just physical books mm -hmm. as a you know, separate part of our, if we have a total like library <coughs> materials expense. Okay. And so we could do a total circulation, but it would yeah. so that would incorporate both in the same number. All right, um, thanks. When you buy a book, it's a perpetual license, a physical book. You own it, and it's the lifespan of the book. Yes. Um, until you get rid of it, it's no longer of interest to you, the public, or it wears out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Managed. You mentioned for eBooks and any digital stuff, it, it's sort of it's more of a mixed model where if you're paying per use. Obviously, that's not a perpetual license. You're going to pay throughout the lifespan of that item. Um, but you also mentioned that you've got some hard upfront costs where you are paying for a perpetual license of upwards of $60, $80. What's the mix in terms of perpetual versus, you know, uh, per use or subscription type licenses? Uh, it's, it's difficult to generalize completely. Um, it, I'd probably be comfortable saying most of the first copies of items are the more perpetual. Um, even then, though, I'm not sure that perpetual is a safe descriptor because um, the publishers eventually um, likely will cha be changing <laughs> that if they haven't already, and I don't know the terms okay, off enough. the top of yeah. my head. Uh, for us, most of the ebooks are purchased through the network, CW Mars. Mm -hmm. um, so we give them some money as and part they of administer our that and help determine. They have selectors themselves that pick the this one, this one, this one. Um, yeah. We also, in Lunenburg, have a, they call it Advantage. Um, I select additional ebook titles. Typically, that's based just on um, people's requests for more copies. Um, so it's a combination, combination of formula-based purchasing as well as some curation. Yep, that you get it's all, I mean, it's all curated. Um, some of it is just outside of the Lunenburg staff. Right, okay. And why do you go through CW Mars? Yep. Do they have a little, why do you go through CW Mars? Do they have a little more leverage or? Uh? Absolutely, yes. Um, so it's the network CW Mars. Yep. Um, over 100 libraries, central western part of the state. Sure. Um, part of and so we do that, CW Mars does it through Overdrive, so the Libby app, um, and Overdrive is the company that owns that. Um, they have a very exclusive club called the Million Checkout Club um, for library groups or networks or individual libraries who have more than a million circulations in a year. Mm -hmm. CW Mars circulated 1.3 million items last year, FY19. Um, so Electronic. That's, what's that? Electronic items. Yes. Yes, okay. um, that doesn't even begin to touch the physical items. Um, so that's a, that's a remarkably high number. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it does represent a significant, it's a really s small group of um, networks that can say that that's true. Um, but we get from them, we're, do, we're doing acquisition, but we're also doing distribution. So they're acquiring the the materials on our behalf but they're also distributing the materials to our users through the, their applications right I mean is that more or less how that's being administered 
So CWMAR selects what titles are in the collection within the OverDrive um, catalog. Okay. Um, the app is kind of, I, I guess there's some, some part of that description that, that I'm recoiling from, but I think it's, it's, it's accurate. The layman's purposes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, because there's obviously <coughs> an accounting that goes on there yes. to determine the usage, which then is driving some sort of mm -hmm. licensing fees, so. Yes. Yep. Um, and so part of our annual membership fee to the CW Mars goes directly to, to the e-books. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. For us, there's no way with our current staffing we could, we could do that. No there's way. no way. Yeah. And, you know, to purchase the number of e-books and audio books that, that would even come close to meeting the needs of just our community, impossible for any budgets anywhere near what we're talking about here in Lindenburg. So. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm this little bit off track uh, in that I just CWMRs came up. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years ago we were concerned about the the, the, the membership fee that CWMRs was charging went up quite a bit, and the, 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 has it stabilized since then and around the uh, just eleven or twelve thousand uh, dollar level? Just um, for us. On the next slide. Next it is page. the next oh. slide, so let me advance. I should start look ahead. <laughs> look ahead like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to remember what it was that I was waiting to see on the next slide. <laughs> it was more than one thing. <laughs> several things. Uh, so CW Mars membership, I'll jump ahead to that, John. Um, annually, our CW Mars membership fee does tend to increase. And yep. then, um, in the future, we, we expect it to continue to increase for one of one or more of one than one of three reasons. Um, one is just the increase in usage. So there is some correlation between the number of circulations and the fee that they charge us, because mm -hmm. um, there are some administrative fees that they they are assessed um, on our behalf, um, and so that's one component of it. The second is. Um, Increase an increase in the assessment fee that's based on our population, um, yep. and so okay. with the census coming, um, we will undoubtedly graduate beyond their ten thousand uh, population mark, sure. which is the at the moment the main distinction between a full membership fee and a, a mini membership fee. Mm -hmm. So we're currently paying eighteen hundred dollars for our membership fee. A full membership fee is eight thousand dollars. Um, so I would not expect wow. immediate, immediately to be paying that higher fee. Um, whether they restructure their, that component of the fee, I would expect there to be some change. Um, but I would also expect, no matter what, to be an increase for us because we are above that mark. So in addition to the loss of small library grant funding, right. which is $2,500, yes. we're looking at an increase somewhere in the six to seven thousand dollar range just mm -hmm. for that membership as well that would be i would say that's absolute worst scenario um i think it will be different than that okay um, but this is not fy21 correct i mean we're so, losing them we're losing the grant the 2500 dollars grant <laughs> we're not, no okay both of these will likely be uh, coincident coincidental will happen same soon. time yeah um so it's based on census data Okay. So the decennial census, which is happening okay. now, it's not going to come down until FY22 at least. Um, it depends really? on the timing of the data. The data gets released. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, it likely will be FY23 because the data will come out after FY22's budgeting for our CW Mars. So we have at least one more year and possibly two. Correct. Before we, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And they don't have any mechanism to ease that burden slowly over time. You're yeah, no, absolutely. They, I, they, I think it seems, I can't speak for the entire network, but um, as part of the bylaws committee this past year, um, the discussion seemed very open to some sort of alleviation of that transition, um, whether it's a, a stepped increase mm -hmm. over a decade um, or a change in the actual fee structure um, or a combination of the two. I think it's not likely to be yeah. just a jump to. Well, we can't be the only ones in that situation. 
No, but it's, it's yeah, Winchin Din, Winchin Din would also likely be. Um, there are a couple of libraries that actually go in the opposite really? direction too. Oh, really? Yeah. So oh boy, because you think well, you think generally the population in Massachusetts is generally rising, but yeah. I guess as you move, move further west from here, the yep, yeah, yeah. other fluctuations. Oh well, yeah, to factor. Yeah, um, and as you mentioned, the small libraries and network. Um, so. It's a, a grant that CW Mars applies for on our behalf and, and essentially is a credit for us on our membership fee. We'll, we will lose that at some point. Um, so the assessment fee is here, John. FY20, 13,957. I do have FY21. It is 15,108. Um, yep. And I did ask for, I think, $15,000 in the CW Mars membership line. Um, Sure. Typically, we do use some of the state aid money to pay that fee to. Uh, mm -hmm. but and that's not reflected here because that's the cherry sheet but number. So the state aid money is not part of our requests. Um, it's not part of the, um, you know, that $453,000 of that's appropriated money um, that I'm requesting. Um, it's not part of the 416,000 that is appropriated for FY21, or FY20, sorry. Okay, thanks. Yep. I'm sorry, John. No, I just muttering along. <laughs> <laughs> um, another request was building maintenance um, with the friends taking care of so much maintenance. Um, I did ask for an increase to $2,000 in the library budget for building maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. We did talk a little bit about that, so um, unless there are questions on it, I'll move to the next item. Over the three years, is most of that internally within the library, or was there some external repairs also funded by the friends? Building maintenance uh, expenses as far as the exterior of the building. Right. Um, you, you mentioned painting a particular area inside the library. Did most of this money go towards those types of improvements? Mostly to the inside. Window cleaning is one of those kind of rotating tasks mm -hmm. that we're kind of ready to do again. Um, that that does mm -hmm. tend to help with the with the amount of glazing on the building, yeah. at least in winter, defraying some of those heating costs. Yeah. What I'm trying to pull out of this is, are we not funding facilities for libraries? through the, the facilities line item to properly maintain the building structure, uh, especially building envelopes. And that's something we failed on in many buildings, and I, I really hope we don't do that with the library also. Kit and I walked around the exterior of the building a couple weeks ago and looking, um, knowing the preliminary budget mm -hmm. and him, um, the way the town manager um, allocated some funds for building maintenance through his budget. Um, we did look at some of the exterior of the building and for potential um, work that might might be part of the FY21 list of, of tasks. Um, just, to, just to mention that FY22, if you see some glaring things for building the building uh, envelope, uh, there is some desire to put together a, uh, a group of small projects like that on the capital plan. So, excellent. You know, yep. that's that's something that I'm going to be watching very closely because, uh, as I said, I don't want to see the library take the route of some of the other buildings in town. I agree, and, and you know, one of the great the great experiences for me is when new people walk into the library and they ask how old it is, mm -hmm. and they think it's oh. a couple years old still. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's definitely something while it's still in the condition it's in wonderful to take care of mm -hmm. intelligent the, yeah. uh, the the kit you talked about uh who you, who you walked around the library with this kit from the dpw dpw kit walker yep. wonderful gotcha. facilities guy yep. so i did also request an additional line to support some programming um, as i mentioned attendance numbers are growing um, especially the children's programs to maintain equitable service levels um, where mm -hmm. the programs we're offering, the demand to attend them can be met. Children's programs in particular, there are often limited number of seats for things like STEM programs. Um, so with the, the amount of people that want to come, it'd be great to be able to spend a little more money 
Um, and one of the strategies of doing that would be to bring in additional outside presenters, especially in the children's area. Um, typically, Miss Debbie, our wonderful children's mm -hmm. librarian, mm -hmm. um, takes care of virtually every library program for children in town. Um, and there's always demand for more. Um, every time we do a survey, people want more children's programs from Miss Debbie. Unfortunately, she's one person. Um, and so uh, the goal would be um, to be able to bring in other people to help kind of provide certain, certain programs. And STEM is one of those areas that's a little outside of her expertise. Um, and so um, that's, that's why we asked for $5,000 for programs. Typically, um, so in FY20, the Friends of the LPL um, have committed to providing $17,700 for programs. Those budgets will be entirely used up by the end of June. Um, that includes program, what we call program costs, so paying a presenter directly to come in and, and deliver a program. It includes very small amounts for refreshments here and there, <coughs> um, and also supplies for the programs like uh, Miss Debbie and, and Nicole, our teen librarian, that they build in-house. Um, Nicole, in particular, is great at using supplies and using her um, person to deliver great teen programs. She had a 3D snowflake <coughs> making ornament program that was um, six sessions on a Thursday afternoon during vacation and I think we had 12 or 14 teens come in and make ornaments so that's a great example of that could I interrupt you for one second uh, earlier in the uh, Council on Aging's presentation um, there are also uh, some money being inserted into that budget to cover uh, things that have been funded from other sources in the past and I made the comment that uh, this is the point in your budget that the town is putting an investment into in programming. Um, I hope this continues. Uh, that allows you to have additional funds to enhance the existing programs or maybe find something else that's dearly needed or a, a change in something over the near future. Absolutely. I do too. And I, th you know, I would not expect, obviously, the Friends funding is based on people's generosity right. um, and their ability to drum up support and, and passion for the library. Um, but I wouldn't expect, as long as they have funds available, for them to diminish their contributions um, with it, any of these additional funding requests if they're granted. Right. And, and I wasn't trying to say that I thought that was going to go away. I just feel that the town needs to support this, these programs and the programming in town. And there's going to be more, uh, if not well, more needed and more demanded as we go forward in a number of areas. And I think the town should be sharing part of that burden. Thank you. I think that's true. But I also, the other thing that, and I, I'm not, I know that one of the goals is collaboration. And one of the things that, that I've seen a lot of over the years is a duplication of effort and results and not enough communication between and, and I, I think that the library could, pay, could play a functional role. And, I, and as part of that goes to, okay, so say, for example, I know that you host Grange meetings. You allow the Grange to meet there. And then you also have pollinator presentations. And, gee, wouldn't it be great if the Grange could participate or help support? Or, you know, basically, is there a way to... Um, help to generate some of that collaboration between the schools, between the senior center, between everything that's going on in the center of town that you guys are at the nucleus of. Um, because basically, as I see that we're paying, you're trying to support programs, we're trying to support them in silos. And to me, it would be really, uh, you know, the one thing that has been a big need that people have represented over time is a townwide calendar of events so that on any given day, you know where you can spend time one if you place. happen to have some in, in one, one place. place. Yep. And I don't know where that would be a good place to start to do something like that. <coughs> I don't want to put it on the library. But I also think that you guys tend to do a lot of programs that, um, I mean, frankly, I, I, I thought that, you know, like maybe the new recreation director could, could do a town calendar of social or that type of thing mm -hmm. using the other department heads to help produce that. 
Um, certainly be happy to collaborate. I, no, I know, and I think, and I, I guess it's just, you know, so as I hear that, yeah, it's good for the town to start supporting more program development, I also think that we need to do it efficiently and effectively so that we're making the best use of the resources of all of the, um, mm -hmm. all of the departments. And I think that that was one of the nice things about the Turkey Hill group coming in. Um, it started rough. And it's great that it's working. I, I mean, basically, it started on a, you know, but wait a minute, but, but you're using all our resources. It's like, but no, you're open. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's basically trying to, to have some more of that. Um, but I will let you finish the slides so that we can get to my questions if <laughs> Absolutely. I. Absolutely. Um, Happy to continue. Now that I've forgotten what they are. Okay. I'm sure they'll come back to you. Um, Just a quick slide on the other requests there. You know, vast majority of our budget we've talked about um, amounts wise. There are a few other things included. Um, mileage and office supplies were also increases that we requested. Uh, mileage in particular um, helps reimburse staff for mm -hmm. either the required CWMR's participation um, when we travel for governance meetings for the network. Um, or professional development, even more important, I would say, is professional development. To keep the staff performing at high levels, um, we're, we're lucky at the moment to have a staff very interested in developing professionally, um, but to be able to reimburse them for their travel to, um, whether it's um, really close by in, in Lemonster for a, um, a programming um, kind of tete-a-tete -tete with other librarians to share ideas, or going to the city for our teen librarian to um, to meet with an author and to get some summer reading pri um, prizes for the incentives for the kids. Um, there's all sorts of professional development things that happen. Is this something that's not currently happening? We're not currently reimbursing for mileage we are. expenses? Uh, for FY20, initially we had $300 for mileage. Um, and I think I, we've expended Spend 470 um, And I had to kind of cut back, but I've you know, transferred some funds onto that line to continue to support that mm -hmm. interest. What uh, is the per mile? It's whatever bigger. the federal government cents, I think. number is. Yeah, it's yeah. the federal the, number. 50, 58 cents, I think, yeah. for this year. So really, well, 300 bucks sounds like a little bit. It's, it's not That's even that, yeah, it's, it's, it's not even like so 500 miles, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it just, <Yeah>. wow. <laughs> yep. No, I mean, I think that, um, you know, Selectman Jeffries often talks about his intent to make the town a better employer and I it's hard you know obviously I think we will all want the town to be as great of an employer as we possibly can be I think anybody who works in the private sector realizes that there are advantages and disadvantages to working in the in the public space and working for a municipality and some things we'll be able to do some things we won't be able to do sure. but this seems like really basic stuff yeah. like if we're not doing this we're doing something wrong we, we've got to figure that out yep so we're making it work um, yeah, I think we'd be able to probably lose some yeah. thousand bucks so far yeah. office supplies also typically we're, we're just purchasing materials to process books so to cover them lengthen their lifespan um, and you know that material is as all things kind of always increasing in cost too so um, You know, I did want to put this slide in to acknowledge the town manager's preliminary budget. Um, $433,000 and a 3.45% increase seems really great. Um, the trustees kind of echo that sentiment. I have not seen the line by line, so I don't, I don't know how that, those amounts are, are spread out yet, but looking forward to finding out. Um, yeah, I think, and actually one of the, I mean, I can see the line by line, and I would talk to you about the line by line, except that what I don't know is whether she has reasons for not putting and yeah. putting because I don't know if she's actually put it someplace else. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I really wanted, yeah. wanted to acknowledge um, sure. she does address our top three priorities um, within that budget. The energy needs of the building, taking care of those and making sure we can mm -hmm. heat and provide electricity. Um, that funding for the consultant for a strategic plan. Um, and then that 16% library materials expenditure, yep. um, those are, those are <coughs> in there. Um, she also has a nice, 
uh, response to the building maintenance, um, which is additional funding mm -hmm. through the DPW. Um, oh. That's you know okay. fine with me um, as long as we're taking care of that building. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I would make a request, and this isn't just specific for this presentation or this portion of the budget, but for the budget as a whole, I think that it's hard to visualize what is and isn't as we're looking at these presentations, what is and isn't inside of the town manager's proposed budget. So if there's a way to make, to, so that we can visualize this in a standard format as we're going along, it would be helpful. You mean, so basically on, on the budget where she didn't include building repairs and maintenance? Right, or as we're seeing, or as, but as we're repair. hearing from sure. the, as we're hearing from the department heads making it very clear what we're referring to and whether it's inside or outside of that number sure. or whether it's above the request number yeah. right it, it's just it's it's difficult for me to keep track as we're as we're having this yeah. conversation oh okay because i was just following along i get it i know yeah okay yeah. so i um, wanted to make sure that you had that with it okay it's not just you okay, okay. I, I just i think there's a better way to visualize this sure uh, okay <coughs> excuse me um the thought about value again I'm this is one of the things I promised later how can you value a library um, there's a great organization called I love libraries that did create a calculator all right it is based just on tangible statistics so the numbers of circulations the number of visits the number of programs the number of attendees um, and plugging in our FY19 numbers LPL's value 2.05 million dollars so that is, even if you include those outside funds expended, um, at least a four to one return on investment. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. I, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of, 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 of calculating a dollar-based outcome from statistical indicators. I, I work in that field around risk and trying to apply a dollar value to things like cybersecurity risk. Yeah. And the, the math behind that can make your hair hurt. I don't <laughs> know what the math is there. But I think that that, you know, you brought up a topic that I was going to try to hit upon, which is, you know, a lot of these presentations are driven on indicators such as traffic or, you know, um, uh, circulation or what have you. And those are the best indicators that we have. There's a whole other potential level of abstraction that it would be great if we could get our arms around, which is actual outcomes, right? So Absolutely. let me give you an example. I'm the father of a 11-year-old boy who's part of the program that you referred to in the fifth grade, cool. and he's raving about it. He thinks it's the coolest thing ever. My question is: is can we attribute that to some sort of performance down the line, right? Where we can say these kids are naturally gravitating toward finding a resource that they wouldn't otherwise find or something right and I don't know that that can be done with the school department but you know that's the kind of collaboration that I would love to see us get to at some point in town where we can say no these are these are real value-based outcomes that, yeah. that there's some sort of rigor behind these numbers and we're we're confident that the dollars we're spending are reaping X return Anecdotally, it, you know, it's not qualitative, but you know, this year I, I do, you know, a lot of those faces from last year's fifth grade class classes. And that was just one example. I mean, you, you're doing this, the you're doing that program times 400, yeah. right? I mean, I get that. It was just one example. Absolutely. And there's, you know, I agree. And there's no way you would totally, you would be able to calculate the total yeah. return. But, but I think that there are great opportunities to be able to articulate that and, and, you know, in doing so, build additional support from within the town to support programs across the board, not just the library, but ac across the board. Okay. Did we answer all my questions? Did I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, while you're thinking are, about that, are. could I ask one? We are. <laughs> all right, you can ask a question, but you're okay. going to throw me off. I just know. <laughs> um, in the news recently, um, and I don't remember what town it is, uh, but there was uh, 
things that go away make news sometimes, especially in libraries. And the announcement was made that their fines were going away and they were revamping that whole system. Do you see that um, as a doable thing somewhere down the road? And is there a plus to it? Um, I know the minuses are loss of the revolving uh, funds, uh, so on sure. and so forth. Absolutely. I, we are currently working on a pilot um, version, like a step in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to talk too much because it's not finalized. Right. Um, that is definitely uh, a priority of the trustees of the library mm -hmm. um, is to consider whether that's beneficial to our community. Um, oftentimes, fines at the library are an obstacle most to the people that need the library. Right. So those least uh, able to pay fines mm -hmm. uh, are the ones that most need the library. Yeah, I, um, and so I, not to interrupt you, but I think that's the biggest benefit of absolutely. doing something like that. Yep. And so you know, ethically, it aligns with librarian values to eliminate fines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, functionally, there is still um, you know there. We, we had a long, 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 long discussion with the trustees and me. Um, <laughs> I hear one of them laughing. Um, and so, you know, so it is, you know, I can get, I could get off on a tangent here. I'll try not to. Um, you know, that removal of that obstacle is absolutely a benefit to the community. Um, mm -hmm. To consider the loss of the revolving fund, um, there is data that supports in library and communities who have gone fine free. Um, they tend to generate actual more, actually more revenue by having a donation jar out for you know, friends of the library, for instance, to funnel mm -hmm. a donation for someone who feels guilty for bringing something back late. Um, that person who's able to pay the fine is likely to pay more than they would have if you had a set amount cool. charging. Right. Um, you know, I don't know that that's universal, um, but certainly that that alleviates some of the fear of losing the revenue from the revolving fund. Right. Um, it likely would still be there, just in a slightly different form. Mm -hmm. um, I, Thank I you. That, that answered my question. To the question, but no. yeah, I, oh, that answered. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Okay, I just have a couple of really silly questions now. This is where I get to the silly part of the evening. Um, in the capital plan. There's a replacement of the carpet. Yes. And the replacement of the carpet is going to be carpet tiles instead of carpet. And I know that part of that involves the movement of stacks. Yes. I'm just curious, why do we have to move the stacks? I th why can't we just <laughs> cut it <laughs> right to, I'm sure that it's basically, it's a stupid question. Yes, yeah, so get some box cutter knives and cart <laughs> around. <laughs> no, basically, you're not replacing the whole carpet. And you're, you're putting it in tile, and I, because I'm also just thinking that down the road, if you did have to move the stacks, because you were happen to move them, you could just replace the the tiles at that point. So, it's a there. There are kind of multiple parts to the answer, um, and the first, I th I don't know if the carpet as installed is actually under the stacks, and so although maybe potentially you could use a box cutter and take the carpet that's exposed up and still installed around. Um, I don't know that that would necessarily be the best practice. And so the, the estimates that we got incorporated what those <coughs> professionals and experts recommended as far as process. <coughs> Part of the appeal for um, the carpet tiles, depending on that physical setup, and I don't know exactly um, because I haven't looked at the proposals from those experts um, recently. Um, part of what one of them at least talked with us about was um, installing, sorry, the, uh, the tiles. You wouldn't have to move every book. I keep hating this. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, it's a blind spot. Uh, you wouldn't have to move the entire um, collection of books um, for certain applications. I'm not sure which of the proposals we mm -hmm. went with um, as far as the, the whole process. Um, but there are the two components, the carpet and installation and, and carpet work, and then also the moving of the collection um, combined for the whole project. Um, 
So tiles also, once they're installed, would likely mean less moving of actual resources within the building in the future. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you can replace one tile instead of the whole set. Um, and, and certainly um, that would mean less moving in the future. So. Yeah. That no, I, well, I think it just came up for me because I know that the last time that this was approved in the capital plan, it was um, it was set aside because the the cost of removing, cataloging, storing the books during the process in order to accommodate it hadn't been written into the capital plan at that point or hadn't <coughs> been requested at that point. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized that that was like forty some odd thousand dollars uh, part of the process, I was just curious as I. Like, why do they have to move them? <laughs> I don't get it. But that was just, that's what I said. You know, I, sorry, had to ask. Um, Appreciate the question. And then I think the other, the only other, uh, it's probably more a comment than a question. Um, I don't know if you were here when Adam Bernie was talking about the two things. One is the, um, the fact that they're going through a study now, um, or, well, it's not even, a, it's to set them off on that, but it's basically going to be talking about um, the... Master plan? No, no. no the demographics or The demographics or the, just yeah. basically what's happening with the, the numbers of people coming into mm -hmm. town, who they are, what they are. So I just basically just wanted to just bring that to your attention in terms of, you know, like as you prepare to do a strategic plan. Absolutely, that would be one of the one of the areas we would collaborate on gathering inf information. The initial stage of the strategic plan, right? Um, and I think one of the other things that, that they were talking about was um, as part of their whole master planning process. I think it's part of the master planning process, or they're just doing it just for the fun of it. Um, was having an economic development committee, oh, cool. and I wasn't sure if there was you know like if that was something you wanted your trustees to talk about in terms of they're looking for a couple of um, at large yeah. members. Okay. for that um, and it just seems the library would be a good resource to have involved in something like that um, so anyway with that um, any other questions for your uh, great job on your first presentation by the way it was very thorough Thank you. Um, yeah I'm sure yeah. Yeah. and I also you know like we do have to say that um, I know that during uh, the presentation that uh, was given by the open space committee regarding the Saliba properties, the library really kind of stood out as a recreational hotspot for the town. And I, and I think that really just um, speaks highly of um, the library mm -hmm. and the people that work there. So that's great. The staff is wonderful. Um, I'm lucky to work with them. Anything else? Nothing else for Mira. Mira, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mira. Thank you very much. Good job. You can come back next year. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be here. Hopefully, hopefully there might be some, some new faces on the committee. Oh, actually, <laughs> that was the other thing I was going to suggest to you, Mir. I don't know if it's possible or if it's something you guys have or would be interested in considering is one of the things that is true of all of the town committees is a lack of participation of people in Lunenburg. And I don't know if it's possible to have a wall or something at Lunenburg with volunteer op uh, opportunities within the town and having placed up there something around, you know, like different, like the finance committee could put up a, hey, finance committee is looking for a member. We do have in, we have a little four-sided bulletin board stand right inside of our front door and one mm -hmm. side is dedicated to town information. Okay. Um, so I would welcome. Can we have a second tie side so that we can put all of them? <laughs> I mean, basically, we're looking at. I think planning is short. Uh, like I don't think there's any there's any committee in town that's in it, that's yeah. strong. And I think because you do have such a large number of people coming in and out, that you know, just Absolutely. as a yeah. yeah. I, I just just to, yeah, to throw out there. If someone would do me the favor of compiling all that, I'd be happy to post it. But I'll also make sure it gets into our newsletter. That would be awesome. Yeah, um, yeah because yeah, I'm sure we'd be happy to send that stuff along. Well, thank you. Um, if Michelle was here, I'd make her do it. But <laughs> she's not here. Um, okay, so with that, thank you again, and thank you for <coughs> the trustees for, for joining mm. us tonight, too. Um, I've, lost, I've lost track of the agenda, but I think we're probably at that point where we open it up to public comment because we right. did everything else already. Would you want a financial report or not? I'm sorry, she, we, she didn't have one. No, no report, okay. Yeah, no. she, we, 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 we went to that when um, <coughs> right, you had escaped us. Dave. Yeah, 
Um, I just wanted to let the committee know that um, that discussion we had during our untelevised meeting in regards to possibly bringing a citizen's petition forward for Maytown meeting um, to fund the saliva borrowing in a different way. I've decided to hold off on that for the time being. Um, I want to have all the I's dotted and T's crossed before I attempt to do anything like that. Um, I think it's something that we need to really look at because uh, that proposal alone would save in the vicinity of $30,000 over five years and put $60,000 back into the operating budget with a very small investment in one year. Um, but I don't feel I could be ready, properly ready for it for May. But that should be also part of this uh, debt project that we brought up, that I brought uh, up last week, I part agree. of that study and discussion that we go into. Mm -hmm. Alternative ways of funding yeah. our capital and <clears throat> the way we've uh, looked at borrowing down the road. Yeah. I agree. All right, well, you guys are coming up with other next meeting things. Okay. All right, next week, the 27th, uh, we have the police and fire okay. presentations. Um, I don't know if um, that you are not here. Physically. You're not physically here. All right, so I won't move a debt discussion to that night. Okay. Um, it does look like, though, are you physically here on March 5th? I am. That might be a, a place where we can potentially start that. Um, I believe Monty Tech will go for a good hour. Public access might not go quite so okay. long. Yeah, I think that the it might be a good place to start the discussion and maybe maybe Shape begin it. to frame the discussion yes. at that meeting. Yes. I don't think that we're going to make a great deal of headway before town meeting on this topic, no. frankly. But but I think that would be. No, I just want to at least get started on what it is that we're we're hoping to mm -hmm. to have that um, look like. Um, then with that, uh, okay, again February twenty seventh, we will have fire and police presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking at the weather for next week, and it doesn't look like we're going to have any problem having that meeting, but um, certainly I'll keep an eye out on okay. it. And if anybody happens to see anything that says schedule a Monday makeup meeting, I'll be happy to do that. Um, other than that, I'd be more than happy to take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Good meeting. You really, I, I think that was baptism by fire from here. He was here a long time. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. He, was, he was really. <laughs>